Well, my guest today has a unique story in the unrelenting horribleness of events that unfolded over what had to be the worst year of her life. The former lead singer of Addison Road, Jenny Simmons, details the deconstruction of her life in her book, The Road to Becoming. This blogger, Bible teacher, and solo artist is here to tell us what she has learned through that very painful season. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Okay, I'm reading your book and I was like, what? Like, is it really true? I mean, really, could this, could these events have really unfolded? Like what, tell us what happened. Well, so yeah, I mean, I'm not creative enough to make it up. It's, <laughs> it's the thing, yes, it was just the craziest um, year of my life. I was pregnant and I was on um, the biggest tour of my career. We were on this rock and worship road show. It was Mercy Me, Jeremy Camp, Hawk Nelson, and me, I was nine months pregnant, <laughs> on stage bouncing around. And so right before this tour started, we left, um, we went downstairs to leave for the morning and found that our van and trailer were not in the parking lot. And so um, they had been stolen. Everything that we use on the road, all of our instruments, and before you start a tour, you, you buy all your merchandise in bulk, you know, so thousands of t-shirts, CDs, buttons, all the ways you make money um, on a tour and support yourself, everything was gone. Wow. And, you know, I, I think when I look back, that's sort of where it began. And then it really, every three months for a year, we had a major loss. The van and trailer was stolen a second time. We replaced it all with insurance and um, gotten a head on collision. That was the third time. Oh, my goodness. And then my daughter was just about to turn one years old. So in between there, I've, I've had my daughter. We've stayed on the road as a band. We've traveled nonstop. And um, right before she turns one years old, we rent an RV, go on tour with Sanctus Real, and it blows up four days in and burns to the ground. With all of your possessions? Everything. Everything that so we So you own. literally lost your equipment four times, and all your merchandise four times? Four times. In one year? In one year. Was there some sort of cosmic message here that someone was trying to tell you? You know, it's so it's so funny because it was such a confusing time because you had we had believers and pastors in our lives who would say, "This is a clear sign from God that you're doing his work." So keep going because there's opposition against you because you're telling people about God's love and his hope and his mercy. And then there were our parents and the more practical minded believers in our lives are saying, this is a clear sign from Satan that you're in the wrong place. You know, this is a clear sign. It's time to stop. It's a clear sign, maybe not from Satan, but from God, like telling you that, that, that it's over. So I was like, who, who's right? Is yeah. it, is it the end? Is it the beginning? And in the middle of all that, your daughter had surgery as well, right? She had surgery, major surgery, major surgery. Our cars broke down. It was, it was like a modern day version of Job. I mean, there was no death in our immediate families, so our grandparents were dying and on the periphery, there were just things happening every single day. It just oh became gosh. unmanageable season of loss. And you really ended that season very broken yourself, mm -hmm. kind of just totally losing it, obviously, who wouldn't? Yeah. And what, so you were almost bankrupt, the band was almost bankrupt, yeah. you were almost bankrupt. I mean, it really was the end. Yeah. What did you do? <laughs> Um, it was the beginning of new life for me. I didn't know it at the time. Um, and what I did, I had breakdowns. I, I really did. I, you know, my, my most famous was, um, I don't know if you've read this, but I was at the grocery store and I had just, I'd been the on the road. Aisle. Yes, the spaghetti <laughs> aisle. I, <laughs> I'd been on the road for years, um, as a, as an artist in a band and you know, you show up and they feed you. You don't even pick what you eat. You just eat whatever there's, you know, what they've got. And, I got home and I thought, I'm, I'm gonna fix the brokenness. Um, that was my first mistake, was, was deciding that I could fix it. I could make it better. I could tape it back together. And so I tried to learn how to cook and that was a total disaster. But I, I didn't know what spaghetti noodles to pick out. There were so many options. <laughs> I love this moment because you're in the spaghetti aisle, you're crying because you, it's like, I don't even know how to cook, my life is a mess, and this lovely lady comes along and she tells you to leave all your groceries right where they are and go order pizza, yes. right? To go get yes. a pizza, which you do. Yes, I do. I had this whole basket full of groceries and I'm just sobbing and, you know, convinced that I have no future and that um, everything is destroyed and ruined and I don't know how to take the next step. And she just says, 
I don't know what the answer is, and I don't know what's going on, but some nights we just do takeout. <laughs> some nights we just do takeout, sweetheart. And you call her oh, your spaghetti angel, which was, was my, great. Yes. But really, you know, at the end, this all ended in the, in the breakup of your band, right. everybody going their separate ways, right. and you really coming into a season, what you call lostness or right. the desert. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit about that season, because I suspect there's a lot of people watching who relate mm -hmm. to that. You know, things, their dream has died and Absolutely. they really don't have direction or know what's happening. They don't have that definition. This right. is the enemy. This is God saying, right. what is it? You know, it was, um, it was such an interesting season because I found myself praying, Lord, I will do anything. You know, so the, there's an end of a chapter here and clearly there's going to be new life. Um, and so whatever that life is, I'm open to it. And I, I just begin to pray. I, I'll go to I'll go to Africa. I will serve on a church staff. I'll do whatever. And the Lord very clearly spoke to me one night, and He said, "I want you to be lost." And I remember thinking, um, well, "That's the meanest answer I've ever heard." And it, and I think for me, it was because I had spent so many years controlling and fixing and having a plan, and it was just this invitation to experience faith. And so all of a sudden I went back to the Old Testament and, and the, the Israelites in the desert just wandering and, and waiting for manna and waiting for quail and waiting for Red Seas to open and waiting um, for plagues to come and go and pass. And, and what I realized the Lord was saying to me is, Jen, you have talked about faith your whole life, but you've never actually had to live it. You've never actually had to be um, like the widow um, that Elijah goes to and she says, I can't feed you because this is the last of what I have, the last of my oil, the last of my water, and then my son and I will die. And Elijah says, do what God has asked you to do anyways and trust that there will be just Give enough. Me the end of your food. Right, yeah. the end. And so that was what the Lord was asking me, trust that there will be enough tomorrow. Not the next five years planned out, not the next 10 years planned out. Do you trust me? that you know, the, my word is a lamp into your feet and a light into your path, not I illuminate the next 500 yards, I illuminate the next five years. Do you trust that tomorrow there will be light and that I will be faithful to, to you to take the next step and then the next step? And so truly I felt like the Lord's answer to me for a season was not to not give me an answer just yet. Mm. And so for a season, I learned what it was like to wake up and trust that God was faithful and that I didn't have to have it figured out and that I couldn't fix it and that I didn't know what came next. And you talked about how, you know, you talked about being in the desert and the Israelites had manna, they had food delivered every single day. Right. And you talked about how there was so much kindness from God during that time and so many little miracles and things that people were oh, yeah. providing for you yeah. that you saw. But I remember this one moment where your pastor asked you, what do you, Jenny, what do you really want God to do? And you said, give me money, you know, because money's the issue at this point, right? right, right. And what did, what did your pastor say? What did, what did you think coming out of that? I thought it was quite profound. Thank you. Um, you know, she said, what if there's never money? Is God still faithful? Is he still good? Um, what if what you think the answer is isn't really the answer after all? And um, again, not the answer I wanted to hear in the moment because what I wanted to hear was everything was going to be restored exactly the way it was. And what she was challenging me to think through instead um, was what if the answer is that Emmanuel, God is with us and that is enough. That is enough. Whether the money is restored exactly the way it was, whether the finances or the marriage or the physical illness that you're facing, whether those things are restored the way you hoped and dreamed for it, or whether it looks different at the end, can you still live your story well, hand in hand with a savior who says, yes, you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but you can fear no evil for I'm with you. My rod, my staff, they comfort you. And she just said, is that going to be enough for you or not? Hmm. And so I had to get to the place where I thought, all right, Lord, is it going to be enough for me? And it didn't mean that I stopped believing or I stopped asking or praying for God's blessing and this richness and restoration, but I began to realize that restoration might look different than what I'd always thought and that that was okay. And you came into a season that you call the becoming mm -hmm. where it was new life for you. There was after this desert time, yeah. but it, it didn't necessarily mean that your circumstances were necessarily changing, but you changed. I changed. And he, he started doing something in you. Tell me quickly about that. Yeah. I, I just began to look at life differently. You know, as I started the journey as a girl with lots of plans and lots of 
um, control over my life. And I ended the journey in, in this particular story as a girl who realized that I had to live with open hands. And as a girl who realized that no matter what the road looked like, how many detours, how many thefts, how many fires that you have along the way, um, that storyline being fixed wasn't the answer. I began to change my heart and live as open-handed. You know, what does today bring? What am I faithful to and asked to be faithful to today, right now in this moment? Not, not the plans, not what comes next, just right now. And so I felt like the Lord just um, invited me, choose life. You know, he, he says that in the Old Testament, he goes to the people, says, choose life that you might live. Choose to stay who you will serve and choose life. And that just became my mantra. Today, I choose life. I can't choose it for tomorrow. I can't choose it for 10 years down the road. I can't necessarily fix the road. I can stand on the piece of road that I'm at right now mm -hmm. and I can say yes to it. You give an analogy in your book about so many of us are walking down the road with our heads down and thinking about the next thing, the next thing. We're not listening for God's voice. We're not connecting with him because we don't have that need. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love, you know, in your book, um, just how you learn to have an attitude of gr gratefulness. And mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about this great story where everything was restored and now you're this fam more famous rock band <laughs> than you ever would have been. Right. You know, your story is still unfolding, but we're always waiting right. for the next thing. But this is life right now, today. Right. This is our life and we have to live it to the fullest. I think it's a really good thing for all of us to think about and remember. Thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. so honestly. This went way too fast, oh. but there's so much more <laughs> wisdom in this book and you. you have a beautiful writing style. So thank you thank so much. You. The book is The Road to Becoming, Jenny Simmons. We have it available on our e-store. If you want to read the full story, this is where you get it. There's tons of gems and wisdom in here. And I'm sure many of us were in that journey of the in-between, you know, possibly in the desert, not really sure of our calling, not sure of our direction, not even sure what God's doing or if he's even with us. We need to remember that he'll never leave us. The promise is he will never leave you or forsake you, no matter how dark it is, whatever you are going through. The most important thing you can do right now, if you're in that place, is call the number on your screen. We have prayer lines 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're just here to journey with you, to give you some encouragement, to listen, to pray with you, to talk to God with you. Sometimes if you don't even have the words, we can pray for you. We can talk to him for you and with you. Please give us a call. We just want to help you on that journey.